So if you caught my video yesterday, you know I talked about the film from Ash. Well today, we're officially starting my reviews, my, which is going to be about a five year process of reviewing every single episode of the television show, which is already way better than the movie. And I've only watched the pilot. Well, actually, I've watched every episode, but my specific rewatch for the reviews, I'm only at the pilot because I'm only going to do, I'm going to watch, record, kind of thing. But anyhow. The pilot is probably, maybe it's going to be the closest in terms of some regards to the movie. Granted, um, Hawkeye should have known who Jenner Hammond was because he was also in the movie, but that's not the point. The point being, this is the pilot for Master. So they're still trying to figure out things like, Father Mulcahy is played by a different actor than he was in the movie, and who he be for the rest of the series. So the movie actor was played by the same actor who played Odo in Deep Space Nine. And I'm, and I, the name is, I know the name, but I just, the pronunciation is forget, is losing me. But, totally different actor for the pilot, and there's gonna be another totally different actor, William Christopher, when we get to the next episode. But you know what? You can already tell a lot of different things. The humor is more fun. Our opening is very different. The opening is probably far more of a movie formula for the pilot, but again, it's a pilot. We're testing things out, figuring things out. Out. But also, the, the show is going to be using the same song for the same Suicide is Painless. However, the show does it um, instrumental, which I think fits the show way better. Additionally, additionally I think it also conveys more, because there is a sense of melancholy in, the, in, the, in that song, in the melody, and I think it really fits the show nicely, especially because cause the, sh the show is, how should I put it? It takes a very different tone. You can already tell. The show is, I think, way more anti-war than the film is, and you can tell that much sooner going on in the sh in just the pilot and on. We're not even the rest of the show where they can get extremely explicit. But what I really like about the pilot is the first two lines of dialogue. Well, we got the... Um, they're playing a football game and Radio says, here they come. And then someone says, I don't hear anything, then he says, wait for it. So that introduces us to Radio, believe it or not. But then the very next line we hear is Hawkeye yelling over to the choppers about getting a, a patient to surgery. Already that tone is very different. And yes, it gets some humor going on in the opening and throughout, but the tone is already set very different. The show, already in the part, you can tell is going to be a lot more focused on them as doctors. And now honestly, like, the fact they were doctors seemed second nature to all the other antics they were getting on in the film. But here, you can already tell, they're putting in greater emphasis on that these are medical professionals, doctors, nurses, um, technicians, and and the staff that help support them. You can already tell the show is taking a different tone and different focus. Now, there's still humor, you know, directed at Frank and all that, but it's kind of weird because since this is a part, they still haven't gotten it out, and I uh, got everything figured out yet. And you can tell for some background stuff, for scene dressing, for that better term, for the scene setting, they were relying on things that happened in the movie, which the show already comes just because they brought Frank back for the show that the mo in the movie had him gone long ago. Um, but like you can tell those things, like, oh yeah, that makes a lot more sense now when you factor in the movie. So the show is like, is already set very differently from the movie. It's obvious, but you can tell they haven't gotten their own continuity decided yet. But pretty soon, you get points and references to the movie, long gone. Like the fact that I think in the, like season 8 maybe there's a reference, that could be the wrong season, but like to the movie it's like, oh wait, wow, they're actually referencing something because very quickly they decided they're not going to follow the same continuity as the, as the movie. A little bit more early on, especially in some characterization, but let's actually address that. You can already tell the treatment of the of the female characters, the nurses, by the doctors and other male characters is already way better in the film. Still not great, especially when you compare it to later seasons and our modern day understandings, product of its time and all that, and product of its setting. But you can already tell there's like you can already tell there's more respect for the nurses as medical professionals. That across the board is like already there. Yes, there's some tenseness in the operating room. And, but, but like you can tell it's because of the stress, not because of sexism. Now there is some that going on, you know, you know, 
you know, pursuing Gnosis Hawkeye and all, and pursuing a Gnosis and all that, which, and mainly in the episode is Lieutenant Dish, which, okay, maybe not the best name, but they do actually, you know, you know, the weekend pass to Tokyo that they're raffling off to get Hojon sent to the States to go to school. Um, Hojon's a houseboy, by the way, who in the movie is actually drafted into the Korean army, so it's a very different story they're already doing there. But, like, okay, so Lieutenant Dish is saying she wants to be faithful. She's not being that faithful. But at the same time, it's like, for the weekend pass, like, she's convinced Hawkeye's gonna rig in the, so that he'll win. But he rigs it so that Father Mulcahy ri- wins. Which is like, okay, it's like, because he's a priest, he's not going to do anything. And priests are supposed to be celebrant, celebrant, so it makes sense that they chose to do that. But I, like, like there. It, actually, this is the first play, uh, play so, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of video games first watch it where I actually realized, wait a second, at the very bottom, Hawkeye stuck one of the tickets to the bottom, and I just realized he fixed it so that Father McKay would win. Obviously, they did that in the script, but First time I actually realized it, because I was paying more attention now, because I was going to be doing these reviews. And then, of course, Hawkeye in trouble getting out of trouble by being good surgeons. That happens a couple of other times. But, another thing, the ending gag is this. Um, Hawkeye and Chapo, you know, start talking to two nurses, and, you know, no flirting and all that, and the nurses start going the other way. But because they were expecting to be hard to be arrested by Jonah Heyman, they had handcuffed themselves, they were, I, um, their left and right arms together, you know, just two. So the nurses start walking the other way, and so they couldn't continue walking. Now that's a great joke, but if we but if we want to think of um, not the external but the internal reason for that is the nurses knew what was going on, knew they had done that, and were me- making messing with them. Which, I mean, come on, that already is setting up that there's going to be a much better dynamic between the male and female characters in the show than there was in the movie. There's a few other much better jokes too, like, there's a joke where, um, Colonel, he- Colonel Blake, Henry, because let's be real, Henry is going up to, for a meeting with Jenna Heyman, which is actually a dinner, but anyhow, how they, they over here on the PA system, basically announcement that, basically, now that Frank is the acting CEO, he is basically putting the sh- stop to the party they were going to have, and the raffle they were going to have, to raise money, so that Hojong could go to school in the States. Well, Hawkeye picks up a brick and and Frank is like all oh, is like ah and then then Margaret is, is like is basically like, no, don't do that. Hawkeye just throws out the PA system instead. But it's like it's a funny joke because you have Frank's reaction and then everyone else's reaction, and then the punchline is, oh it's actually he's just throwing in the PA. Now he may have actually thrown out Frank, but that's not the point. The point is that is a good joke. There's a, there's a lot more better humor. Even if I didn't laugh at all the jokes, I feel the humor is much more accessible um, to a wider audience and much better constructed and funnier. Like, you can watch those jokes again, again and again, even if you don't always laugh at them. I, I, I've seen the opening scene so many times, I actually no longer laugh at the golf ball hitting a landmine. But it still brings a smile to my face, even if I'm not laughing. So you can already tell the show is taking a very different tone. The jokes are much already better in in the show than it was in the movie. And I think that's because the show is more of a sitcom. So it's so comedy is deriving from the situations, obviously. But the movie, not so much. The situation didn't it was it wasn't a sitcom kind of comedy. It's more of a um it was a different kind of comedy. I forget the term, but like the jokes did not draw from the situations that the characters are in. The characters were doing a lot more to create jokes. Which we do get later on in the show, which I think and some of the best jokes are later on in my opinion. But you can already tell the show is taking a very different approach to humor, a very different approach to character relations and and even dynamics. Now part of that is because some of the raunchiness had to be toned back for television, but in all honesty I think that was a good thing for them, allow them to make more likable characters, like, already, okay, obviously I already, already liked all these characters, but all the characters are already way more likable than their movie counterparts ever were. And this is just a part, they only get most of them, including characters that we love that were never even in the original film. But we still got three seasons before the first two of those show up, and then another four seasons, I believe, before the next one shows up. Well, I didn't 
one of them is going to show up in the very next episode. We'll talk about that next week. But in the meantime, let me know your thoughts on the pilot episode for Match Season 1, Episode 1, of course. And also, do you agree with my assessment and the comparison with the film? These first two reviews, retro reviews, have been doing a lot in comparing the film and the show, which makes sense. The first two, the ones the actual film and ones the pilot, so they're getting things together. But, you know what, some of those comparisons will still be talked about later on in the show as it comes up. But, hopefully I'll be able to talk more about each individual episode and maybe especially a lot more messaging that they're trying to say. But that's all I have for you today. So thank you for watching, please be sure to like my video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. May the force be with you, always. Thank you for watching this video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like as well as subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to stay up to date on my latest content. Also, be sure to check out the link tree in the description as well as any other links I have down there. <laughs>